Praise the name of the living God, our Heavenly Father, God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Today is a wonderful day. Currently now, here I'm in Mombasa, and uh, God put into my heart to start a topic which says, God fights for true worshipper. Then how? So today we are starting with the inter introduction on how God fights for true worshippers. Okay, and Jesus is our first model of the true worshipper and we are going to see through the word of God because the word of God reveals everything. Because the word of God is life, the word of God is life, the word of God is the truth, the word of God sanctifies and we were created for one purpose, to worship God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God fights for true worshippers. God fights for true worshippers. God fights for true worshippers. Yes, He does. <laughs> God fights for true worshippers. God fight for two worshippers. God fights for two worshippers. Yes, He does. God fight for two worshippers. God fight for two worshippers. God fight for two worshippers. Yes, He does. Worship. Spirits and truth, worship Him in spirit and truth, worship Him in spirit and truth, yes, worship Him. Amen and Amen. The Word of God speaks that God and Satan, they have great Conflict when it comes to worship. Satan demands worship by force. And God is looking for the true worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The word of God speaks in the book of Matthew chapter 4 from verse 8 through verse 11. When Jesus finished his 40 days and 40 nights of prayer and fasting. Now, the last one in accordance to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 8 through 11, Satan, told, Satan took Jesus, by the way, I don't know how, he took Jesus in the, one of the greatest mountains. And I believe it was physical. And he took him in that mountains, you know, the greatest mountains now in the world is called Ma 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 Mount Ever Everest, eh? Everest, things like that. Yeah, maybe it is that mountain, I don't know, but it was something physically so certainly can appear even physically, maybe through a body because the spirit, so nothing can hinder him because also Satan has power, but is not powerful than Jesus, which is your God, my God, who is our mother, who is our Savior. Now, Satan took Jesus in the greatest mountain, high greatest mountain, and he told Jesus, see all this glory, the fame, the good things, let's say today, good, great thing, which can cause Jesus to give up upon God, I will give you. But in one condition, Jesus, if you will only worship me. And Jesus did not spare Satan. He said to Satan, get the hands. He rebuked him. Get out. And he told Satan, it is written that you will worship God. And secondly, and 
serve him only. This gives us the idea why God created us. He created us to worship him and serve him only. Worship and service services goes together. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, people have been selling their soul to the devil because the devil seeks after worship. For those who are in Christ Jesus, do not allow him. The next scripture. There was a story of a woman who was a prostitute. To cut the story short, when he met, she met Jesus, that is in the book of John chapter 4, verse 23 through 26 there. And after Jesus prophesied, revealing who was that woman, she was a prostitute, and she did not refuse it, she accepted, and because of accepting and acknowledging Jesus Christ's power, then she gave her life to Christ Jesus, and she now wanted to become a true worshiper in that conversation. Therefore, Jesus told him, in that portion of scripture, Jesus was revealing himself to her as Messiah. Messiah means Christ, the anointed one. So Christ, the anointed one, revealed himself to her. And Jesus told her that the hour has come that God, the true worshiper, will match or the worshiper will worship God in spirit and truth and he continued to say his God is looking he's seeking for true worshipers which will worship him in spirit and truth so God desire to have such people and that's people might be you and me if you decide it's, it's a choice okay and Jesus revealed himself to her that he is the Messiah, that is the anointed one. Glory to Jesus. We're still in, in, in the intro, introduction. In another scripture, there was a man who was, who was blind in the book of this uh, John. I think John chapter 9 from verses 23 till 30 something there. Until the last, you read from 23, there is a story. God, Jesus himself, made, healed, sorry, he healed a blind man. And after being, he received healing. And this man suffered for 40 good years in the state of being a blind man. Then after Jesus healing him by opening his eyes, this man received a revelation and you know that in that time there was pharisees and sadducees they were against jesus even if they knew jesus is the son of god but they could not acknowledge the supremacy of jesus therefore after this man received freedom they were still persecuting him and this man lectured them because they, they were saying jesus is a sinner and you see when you call jesus a sinner you are doubting the spirit that was in Jesus. That's why Jesus said, those people who insult, who blaspheme the Holy Spirit, will never receive forgiveness in this world, even in the world to come. And what is blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Telling that Jesus is the devil, while you know Jesus is not the devil. Why? Because the spirit that works in Jesus was the spirit of God. That is blasphemy. It might be you and me today. Someone knows truly Monaco, your servant of God. He knows even you, your servant of God. But because of their own reasons, and it's not good reasons, bad reasons, they call you name. You are a devil. You are what? And truly from their heart, they are convinced Monaco or this person is a true servant or son of God or a man of God. Let me tell you, if you're doing that, it's not me who have said it. I don't know how God will forgive you because this type of sin is will never receive forgiveness. 
Jesus said that because they were calling Jesus Beelzebub. So if you call someone is the devil without a good intention while you, you just doubt, not because you are convinced, it's just doubting. This one, God, I know God understands. He sees the, the heart, the motif. He, he sees that you don't understand. This one, you have mercy. But when you know, and you know that you know, and you are doing opposite, you have no forgiveness. The, the Pharisees told the blind man, the one that healed you is a sinner. That, but praise God. You receive healing, but he's a sinner. The man said, one thing I know, I don't know what he's a sinner or what. One, one I know, I was blind, but now I see. And they rejected him. They chased him out of the synagogue. And well, you know what happened? Jesus met him when he was chased out. And when Jesus met him, one thing he told Jesus, and one thing, uh, uh, before tell, tell, telling Jesus, he, he lectured the Pharisees. He said, We know God does not listen to a sinner. He lectured them. God does not listen to a sinner. But if someone is a worshiper, hey, my God, glory to Jesus. If someone is a worshiper, God listened to him. So there are many benefits of being a worshiper. If you are a worshiper, God will listen to you. You will perform miracles. You will walk in the spirit. You will heal sicknesses and diseases. Through your ministry, the world will be blessed because God will fight for you. Then when he talked about G, you know, worship, acknowledging Jesus as a worshiper. And some people are saying, now, if Jesus is a worshiper, then how can we worship him if, if him he worshiped God. Let me tell you one thing. Jesus is fully God because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Okay? So the Word became flesh. So Jesus is the Word and the Word is God. Now when the Word became flesh, He became full man. Now He wanted to live as a human being, as a mere man or a mere man, to practice holiness so that we may follow him, his footstep, so that we, we may become his disciple. Teach them to become my disciples, says Jesus. Because he, he was a man and he died sinless as a man. That's why we are saying Jesus is the son of man. He is a savior. That's why we need to follow Jesus as our first model of true worshiper. Because he was a man. But now you will worship him also as God. Because he is the word. And this the word who is God. And you follow his model as a man. Because the word became flesh. And was given a name. Emmanuel God with us. This mystery now is revealed to you. Let me tell you. Worshippers have work in revelation. In deep revelation. Don't play with a true worshipper. And I know. I know. I am a true worshipper. Even if you come to tell me I'm not a true worshipper, that is you. But what I know, I'm a true worshipper. I've had several encounters with Jesus himself as the Lord. And I've had also an, an encounter with the devil <laughs> several times. Spiritual battle. So nothing can just, uh, you know, make me wavering. Or So I know who Jesus is <laughs> to me. So nothing will, you know, scare me or what. I, I, in fact, I don't, I know I'm not afraid of anything. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, let's go deeper. When Jesus met the blind man, the blind man, and Jesus asked him, do you believe in the Son of Man? In the Son of God. He said, the man said, the, the former blind man said, Where is he? He was asking, Where is he? And Jesus introduced himself, I am. And he worshipped Jesus. You see now, he worshipped Jesus. So Jesus is worthy of worship. 
So people who say they do not worship Jesus, see, he worshiped Jesus and Jesus did not deny him. Why? Because now Jesus was God to him. Because Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. And when he wants to operate as a man, he operates in holiness as a man. When he's wanted to, he wants to operate in as God, he operates fully as God. And he receives worship, glory, honor, praise, might. Because even you see the four beasts in accordance to the gospel, you know, to, to, to Revelation, the four beasts give worship to Jesus, to the Lamb of God and the Almighty God, the Heavenly Father God. Amen. So, he had that revelation of Son of God. He worshipped the Son of God, the Son of Man. Hallelujah. What a powerful thing. Introduction to how God fights for true worshippers. Now, let's go to the last, the last scripture. Maybe we'll finish there. Now, Jesus, in the book of Revelation, Reveal to us that Revelation chapter 20, maybe verse 4 there, or you read all of them, you see there are people who, who will reign with Jesus during the time of great tribulation. The word of God says, they did not receive the mark of the beast, neither they did not worship his, his image. The image of that first beast now in accordance to the book of Revelation chapter 13. The last verse there. And those who did not have even the mark of the beast or his image or, or his name. They did not. Because when you worship, you are worshipping the devil. You are worshipping Satan. They did not. Because of that, during that tribulation, they denied were to give the beast worship who was also working hard to make sure people is you know worship him by force because Satan is demanding worship by force then they will reign with Jesus Christ what a powerful thing so true worshipers will reign with Christ the all conflict is between God and Satan is about to worship. That's why when it comes to worship, yes, you can have relationship with Jesus as God, you know, he's your God, he's your savior and all this stuff, deliverer. But when you graduate to become a true worshiper, bro, my sister in the Lord Jesus, my brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, things changes. Now God fights for you. He will fight for you. The reason why these people, uh, they... They did not now. It seems that God did not fight for them because God was warning, is warning people even right now. Believe in Him, be ready because Jesus is coming. People are not listening, but when the church will be caught up and the people will realize, you see, the foolish five virgin this is what I believe the foolish five virgin they are still of Christ because they are virgin, I mean, they are Christians, but they, they are serving God in foolishness. Until when the church is taken, then they will realize, they say, hey, no, no, I will not give my worship to the beast, to the six, I will not receive six, 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 when that is serious. So that's why they will fight for themselves in, to obtain that things. But me and you who are right now here, before this day, dangerous day comes, please, I'm talking to you, worship God, spirit, and truth. Be among the five wise virgins. So when Jesus comes, we will be caught up and to meet Jesus on the air. So those are those will be, you know, strong worship of five virgins. Oh, <coughs> powerful, let me tell you. So be among them. I've decided to be among them. In fact, that is my prayer. I pray in God that I need to enjoy, you know, not, not to die physically, to be caught up, you know, like, no, 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 like, like Enoch. Like Eli, uh, you know, Enoch was caught up, you know. Elisha and, and, and uh, Elisha did not, but uh, the, 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 the one, yeah, 
who was not Elisha, but uh, the one the Elisha received the the one Elisha received, you know, the double portion. Hmm? From he was caught up and go to heaven, and that is my cry and my prayer. That I mean, I want to enjoy that thing. That is my prayer, and I believe God listens to the prayer of two worshippers. I believe he will grant me this one, and he will grant you if that is your desire. By faith, everything is possible with God. But without God, all things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With man, nothing is possible. It's impossible with man. But with God, everything are possible. Praise the name of Jesus. So, is conflict. So when you become a true worshipper, do not worry, my brothers and sisters. Relax. Make sure you does the will of God. You do the will of God. Now enjoy how God will fight you. People will rise up against you. People will gang against you. The devil will command people to do things against you. When even you speak what is right, what is the truth, the Satan will confuse their mind against you. Some of them, they don't know. That's why we need to have mercy upon such people. We have, yes, mercy upon them. But if they will not repent, it is upon them. What I will tell you, God will fight for you if you are a true worshipper. He will fight for me because I believe I am a true worshipper for the glory and honor of Jesus. So this is just the introduction. That's why it has taken, you know, this uh, like 20 something minutes. Yeah, so God fights for true worshipper. May this video inspire you. Because it is full and influenced by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And I talk, and when I'm speaking about worship, God fights for true worshippers. I'm not speaking about musicians like me now playing. That's, that, that one does not qualify me as a true worshipper. True worshipper is far away from playing guitar. The only thing, I am a musician. So now, I express my worship through music. But true worshippers are not musicians, are not, uh, you know, pastors, are not, no. True worshippers are people who have believed in Christ Jesus and just determined to serve God in spirit and truth, you know. And worshiping God in spirit and truth, they have the Holy Spirit, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they have received the Holy Spirit in their lives, and they are led by the Holy Spirit of God, and they have read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation to know the truth of God, and God reveals themselves to them, and they are purpose to live a truthful life and also spiritual life for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is what, I, what is that is the truth. Okay? So Music is not worship. It's just a one way you can express your worship. That's worshiping your God, worshiping Jesus Christ, worship the Holy Spirit, worship our Holy Father through music. We can worship God through pastoring. You can worship God through evangelizing. You can worship God through family prayer. You can worship God as an engineer. You can worship God as a plumber. You can worship God. As a, a government official, you can worship God as a president, you can worship God as an MP or a governor or an ambassador, you can worship God as a farmer, you can worship God, you know, worship God is, you know, is everything and through anything you can worship God, only not through sin, through anything but not through sin or through the devil. No, you worship God in the spirit, you know, uh, in spirit and truth, through the name of Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, in a right way, by the word of God. Are you understanding? So this video is, is like a golden video, so receive it in a good way. And uh, I'll speak this word with a clean heart. I'm not targeting anyone or anyone or anyone. But what I'm targeting, I'm targeting the vision of Heavenly Father God 
He's seeking you to become a true worshiper. Hallelujah. And God fights for true worshipers. This is only the introduction. To God be the glory. And if you want to be a true worshiper, then believe in Jesus Christ. And that is the beginning of the journey. God fight for true worshipers. God fight for true worshipers. God fight for true worshipers. Yes, He does. Worship Him. In spirit and truth, worship Him. In spirit and truth, worship Him. In spirit and truth. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me see. Come on, like I'm going to say, 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 Nelly broke on the sun and the sand because the hollow crumb holds it. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is needs to come. Hallelujah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I bless your name, I honor you. This lady, this woman, this brother, oh God, desire you, oh God. Ramasaka and you are here, you want to worship God in spirit and truth, but you are far from God. Repeat this word after me say, Lord Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. I want to become a true worshiper. Therefore, God, I confess my sin. Forgive me. Forgive all of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the saving Lord of my life. With my mouth, I believe. And with my heart, I believe. And with my heart and my mouth, I believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He took away all my sins on the cross. He took all, away my curses. He took away all my shortcomings on the cross. And he died. On the third day, he rose from the dead. Seated right, right now at the right hand of the Father. Come into my life. Lead me in, in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if this video has blessed you, share it to somebody. Subscribe for you to get so that you may get a notification and share it to many. Spread this gospel. Spread because many worshipers who have not come to Christ Jesus will realize God is seeking after them and you will be serving the God. the creator of all the universe in Jesus name amen God fights for true shepherds yes he does.